I don't know if you've ever had this opportunity, but I definitely have had this opportunity where I thought I was lost because um, I took a wrong turn somewhere. And, and way back when I first started driving, we didn't have a GPS in the car. We didn't have a cell phone. I didn't have a cell phone. So forget about having uh, Google Maps on my cell phone. I didn't even have a cell phone. Um, and if you were lost, you stopped and you asked someone for directions. And I remember being lost in this part of Karachi. Now, Karachi, even at that time, was something like 8, 9 million people. Just now, Karachi is more like 30 million people. And I remember being in a part of town where I didn't want to stop and get out of the car to ask anyone for directions. So I just closed my eyes, asked for help, and decided to follow my nose. And I told myself, I have a pretty good sense of direction. So I found my way. I found my way without having to stop and ask anyone outside of myself for direction. And, and that's the thing, is we all have guidance inside us. Learning to trust that guidance is so important. And you see, the guidance that comes for you and me and someone else is going to be different. Why? Because our belief systems are different and source will never guide us away from our belief systems. What source wants us to do is to change our belief systems so that we can make it easier for ourselves to go forward. But source will never say, oh, jump out of your comfort zone. And that's why it's so difficult to jump out of your comfort zone because it feels horrible. It feels horrible because you're not ready for it. That's not what I teach. I teach people to expand their comfort zones by changing their beliefs. And that's what we all need. We need, and we, it doesn't take time. <clears throat> it doesn't take time to increase your comfort zone. You know how you do increase your comfort zone? There are three ways to increase your comfort zone. One and the biggest way that most people use is that they borrow other people's belief. Meaning, my teacher tells me, my parent tells me, someone else tells me that I can do it. And I don't believe in me, but I believe that they believe in me. So I borrow their belief in me. And I say, if they think I can do it, I can do it. That is the, that's what all of motivation is about. When people listen to motivation speakers or read a book written by someone who is a motivational teacher, that's what's happening. The motivational teacher is giving you their belief in your ability. And you believe that they, they are right in, in their belief. So you take action. So that's the first one. <clears throat> and this is why people keep going back to motivational speakers. Because when you borrow someone else's belief, it doesn't stay with you for very long. You see? So you have to keep going back to get another dose and another dose and another dose and another dose of it. Right? I was in the forefront of those people who did that all the time. That's why I read so many books. That's why I listened to whoever was there because I needed that replenishment of that motivational energy that was from the outside, right? <clears throat> now, so that's number one. Number two is the long way. The long way is, oh, I have to change my beliefs about this thing. I hate my boss, I hate my job, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to work on my feelings of hating my job and my boss and I am going to reconfigure the way I look at this situation because it's so important for me to hold down this job. I want to kick the job every single day but I'm not going to do it because I need the job more than the job needs me. And so I am going to figure out a way to soothe my angst and continue showing up and continue smiling and doing a good job because I know that's what's good for me. So I'm going to sit down and work on my angst because your angst is a belief. 
You see, that feeling of angst is a belief. So we turn that around and now we can stick with it. And so many people do it and I, I have so much admiration for people because I know those people, some of them are my friends, that they spend 40 years working a job that they hate every single day. Some of them are my neighbors and they show up every single day. But their angst, because a lot of them are not working <clears throat> on changing their belief. They soothe themselves, but they don't change their belief. That's why the next morning they still wake up with the same belief and then it shows up in their bodies. Those are the people who go around with problems in their body, whether they look overweight or whether they have a, a health situation going on, it shows up in their body. That's where they're storing all that stress. And that's happened to me as well. I've stored stress in my physical body and I know it. Now I know it. I didn't know it back then, right? And I, it still happens to me. And I, I know it's happening and then I have to work on it to get rid of those beliefs. So you have to not only get rid of the physical symptom, but you also have to get rid of the belief that caused it to happen, right? And that this is why diets don't work for a lot of people because they try to get rid of the physical symptom, but they don't work on the mindset that created it, right? And so that's the second thing. The third thing, <clears throat> The third thing is that you drop the negative belief right there and then. You just say, not doing that anymore. Right? You're standing right there in front of the deep end of the swimming pool and you look at the water and you're afraid. And then you say to yourself, I don't need to be afraid. I can do this. So you coach yourself. You become your own motivational coach you tell yourself, I can do it. And in the moment that you do it, that belief shifts and now you can do it. Haven't you done things like that? It's that courage in the movies. You see that high school kid getting the courage to go and ask that girl out. That's what is happening, right? It's the self-talk that shifts inside. And now you have what we call courage. It looks like courage on the outside because you suddenly made a shift. And that's so yummy. I love it so much. Right? And I've done that. As a salesperson, I have done that. I have walked into an establishment to speak to the business owner and got cold feet. And then I have stood there and breathed and told myself, if other people in your organization can do it, you can do it too. And that's when you start coaching yourself. That's when you start shifting your self-talk. And you can do it like that. And in five minutes, you can feel better. <clears throat> I was reading a book one time. Um, I, I don't remember what the book's title is, but it's a phenomenal book. And uh, what, what the author wrote in the book, Schwartz, Schwartz, that's the name of the author. I still don't remember the name of the book, but it's one of my favorite books. So he said, if... If I can, so from a sales perspective, okay, if my boss shouts at me, sits me down and dresses me down, shouts at me to push me out of the office so that I can go and do sales, you know what? I can shout at myself as well. I can roll up the windows in the car and I can shout at myself and then I can go out and do, make those sales. And that's how we change our self-talk, really. That's how we do it, right? So those are the three ways that we 